Hey, hey there, guys and gals. I'm the, well, he's kind of a goofy candy bar. What's up, dudes and dudes to the air? Now, my name's Seth, and we are back again for some more Trove on an Xbox Uno, which, of course, is going to be the same experience as the PS4. That's why I labeled them appropriately. But how y'all doing today, folks? Hope you're doing fantastically wonderful. I gotta say, I am in a fantastically wonderful mood. Like, seriously. And it's because of all of you. Yep, you. Right there. <laughs> no, seriously though, I just gotta say a huge thank you to every single one of you because I am absolutely like, I'm being blown away here by how much like the series and how the channel has been exploding today. It's absolutely, not today, it's just hitting me today. It's just absolutely nuts, you know? Like, I, I can't even believe how quickly it's going. And I just want to say thank you for all of that. Seriously, folks, because, I mean, I'm just a guy playing this game, right? <laughs> so anyways, I thought today, rather than a tutorial, we would just kind of hang out, do some dungeons together, and talk about a couple of the features and some of the stuff that might end up going on in the future of this series. So first and foremost, you know, we ended up creating our club world, right? Which is going to be the Jub Jub Club. And then this other guy just randomly invited me to some other club club and I just accidentally joined it I don't know but needless to say Jub Jub is gonna be my main club I haven't had any time to build or anything like that honestly speaking I really could care less uh, as far as the console experience is concerned it kind of takes a back seat as far as the seriousness you know like with uh, PC Trove I, that's my baby, you know, I've been playing that game for years uh, I'm at the end game, you know, not really like the super end game or anything like I'm not like a top player by any means but top hundred to be sure and really enjoy myself with that and with Xbox the whole aspect of the game that I'm enjoying is the free-to-play noob experience right Ooh, I'm so used to my death-defying like seriously uh, death-defying is the flask that ends up automatically healing you once you end up reaching death and uh, I don't have it on the console version yet because I don't have enough cubits to save my life but uh, there's a couple things that are very, very important that I wanted to talk about today. First of all, it is about the updates coming to Trove on Xbox and on PS4. So, this is actually extremely exciting here, folks, because the devs actually did end up mentioning in their last live stream, uh, they were talking about, you, they live stream every week, you can check them out, but they ended up talking about how with Trove on Xbox, what they want to do is uh, they're trying to iron out all the bugs that they can with the Xbox and PS4 version of Trove, and then they're going to hit the consoles with every single update that is on the PC version up to right now. That will be insane if that ends up happening. That'll be like a gig or two gigs of updates. Like seriously, I really, really am excited about that. And I most of all really hope that it doesn't take them like half a year. I mean, half a year, I guess, would be okay. Uh, but as it stands right now, uh, don't get me wrong, folks. I, I And I love Trove. But the fact of the matter is that the recent update that ended up hitting, I, I don't know if you checked it out, uh, you know, because you're sitting here thinking, I'm, on a, I'm a console player. Why would I check out a PC update? I would recommend that you do it, folks, because that update is the future of Trove. It seriously ends up completely saving this game from so many different features that end up holding it back. One that I want to just say, you know, because I'm not going to talk about it all in that much detail. This is so stupid when you knock an enemy off the dungeon, like seriously. Uh, but at least we can end up taking this portal right back up. But the biggest feature I want to point out right here, right now, is if you can, only if you can, folks. If you can't, don't worry about it. Just go and do whatever you want. But if you can, save your money when it comes to the classes because with the update that ended up hitting with PC, you can actually craft all of the classes for free. And that is eventually going to end up coming to consoles, guaranteed, just who knows when. It couldn't end up being a very long time. That's why I say if you know if you need to update or if you need to spend money on this game uh, to enjoy it more, well, do it. Who cares? But 
That was the big thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, the other big thing I wanted to talk about is uh, just the next tutorial update that I'm going to end up having because otherwise, you know, every now and then we're going to be doing uh, the Trove series like this where we're just kind of doing dungeons and just talking about some information and stuff like that. Uh, but the next big video that I'm going to be doing, that one might end up being a little bit longer, is I'm going to talk in detail about the fishing uh, and the pirates and stuff like that, like the uh, pirate ships that you can actually find right now out in the ocean uh, and you can trade stuff with them and everything. It's, it's going to be a good time, but that video is definitely going to take me a long time to do just because of all of the big cuts that I'm going to have to make searching for the stupid ships, which come to think of it, I think most of all end up showing up in the water world anyway. Look how this is what bombs are, by the way. Once you get to the late game and you can just craft bombs like a crazy person, you just blast your way into every dungeon. Like seriously, it's hilarious. We might end up getting to that point on console eventually, but honestly speaking, I don't know. And also, I wanted to say that as much as I'm loving the candy bar, don't get me wrong, I am. Uh, I'm thinking that we might end up uh, upgrading, or not upgrading, but we might end up actually getting a secondary class already. And I'm I'm leaning towards the Dracolite, the Draconis, because. If, if you're just tuning into the series, folks, a million year, zillion years ago, back back when I started playing uh, Trove on PC, it was in the closed beta, right? And the Draco was actually my first character. Back then, you actually started with the knight, uh, and then as soon as I ended up finding a class changer, because back in the day, there actually was a uh, item that you had to interact with in order to swap your classes. Now you can just do it on the fly, which is just way better. But needless to say, the Draco was the second class that I ended up discovering and as soon as I used the fire I was in love because I love fire in video games like there's just something about it sometimes you know not really so much but most of all uh, you know I just love the style of the character the way that it looks not to mention its ultimate ability you get to turn into a big beautiful dragon monster it's absolutely crazy um, but that does mean that we would end up kind of starting from square one uh, just with the character at level zero going through uh, just normal uber worlds and stuff like that. But potentially speaking, I would actually not mind uh, making the Draco my main again because honestly speaking, the biggest reason why I'm playing these uh, side characters, if you could even call it that, like the Barbarian and the Draco and stuff like that, is because on the PC version, I don't touch them. You know, I, I ended up playing the Draco and then they ended up having the uh, Mantle of Power update on the computer was the version that ended up adding the gem system, right? And when that system ended up coming out right off of the hop, you know, there was lots Lots of classes that ended up being very broken. Draco was one of them where it was just, you know, the damage numbers weren't calculated properly day one and the character just got outshined by a bunch of other characters, right? And even right now, the Draco... Once you get to the late game, and I'm talking the end game, where you have your class gem ability and everything like that, once you get to that point, the Draco is still a fantastically powerful character, but he doesn't keep up with a lot of the others just because of how his abilities operate. That's kind of how Trove ends up being in the end game, folks, is, uh, you know, most of all, it's because, you know, the numbers are actually, they're, they're okay, you know, they do them pretty well, where it's like most characters end up being able to handle, you know, every character can end up handling U9, and even with Shadow Tower Ultra, eventually you're going to be able to handle that with every character. The difference is mostly due to the abilities of the characters. So with the Draco character, of course, we'll talk about it in more detail when we swap over to him, but his main ability and main form of attack is actually throwing a bomb on the ground that you have to attack for a short period, uh, and then it explodes and causes damage. Now, because of that delay, that is the big reason why that character, I feel, does doesn't keep up as much in the end game because we like that dungeon right there that we just cleared we just killed that boss faster than the Draco could just because our abilities don't take as long to cast. You know what I mean? So the cast time to the damage ratio doesn't end up adding up. And I, I'm not trying to hate on or anything like that, folks. It's just I've been playing this game for a million years, and I've always been and will always continue to be very honest about how the system is because there is definitely a lot of people that like to try hard this game, you know? And for the most part, 
Uh, you know, this is a joke that I've been saying with the PC version of Trove ever since I started playing the game. The fact of the matter is that most people that think, uh, you know, get into the hardcore math with this game and everything like that, there is no hardcore math. You know, they're only deluding themselves. There really is not, like, Trove is not a complicated game. That's why it's my favorite, because it's so approachable and you don't have to be a mathematician to understand how the end game works, you know? Well, I still just kind of know the ins and outs of Trove just because I've been playing it for so long and also just because I'm very interested and understand a lot of the game mechanics, not so much of the calculations and stuff, right? Now, there are damage calculators and stuff like that that you can look up online and they're useful to be sure, you know, you can actually use them to calculate like, okay, if I put all the same uh, physical damage gems on my candy barb uh, and compare that to the boomeranger, you're going to be able to see with that damage multiplier how much more or less damage you're going to be doing with your abilities and then just kind of take into account the cast time, right? So in that regard, yeah, that's pretty much as hardcore as Trove ends up getting because honestly speaking, folks, if anybody's sitting here trying to make this game hardcore, it's because they weren't good enough for World of Warcraft, right? Because, I mean, that's why I play it. I'm not good enough for World of Warcraft. That's why I love Trove, because it's a kid's game at heart. And that is one of the reasons why I love it. I love kid games. I love Nintendo. Who doesn't, you know? But anyways, uh, I'm digressing, folks. I just wanted to get that point across and just kind of clear it up and let you all know going in that... Play the character that you want. Don't worry about who's better, who's worse, who ends up completing dungeons faster. None of that stuff ends up mattering in the end game because honestly, if you're not going to end up playing a character that you enjoy, are you even going to end up getting to the end game anyways? And if you're sitting here wondering, you know, well, I don't really know what any of the characters are, uh, you know, how do the previews of the characters end up working or anything like that? Well, don't worry because not only are there tons and tons of tutorials that I have online already, ready but also uh, I want to actually double check this before I say it but I'm pretty sure that you can actually uh, character sheet here we go that's not the character sheet where is it I'm looking for character selection but you can actually trial all of the characters and uh, test them out up to their ultimate ability which means that you can actually get them to level five or something like that it, it's a very very early level but needless to say the fact that you can actually try them all out means that you don't gotta be afraid of experimentation you know like the lunar lancer for example uh, ends up being really really powerful but very very boring to play because you're pretty much spamming his number one ability where he just goes hoop bah hoop it's like he's playing tennis with himself. I want a tennis racket for his weapon, seriously. But needless to say, uh, if that's something that you enjoy playing, is just monotonous gameplay of doing the same thing over and over, go for the Lunar Lancer. And I'm, I'm not trying to say that to be sarcastic. I'm being legit, you know, whereas for myself personally, I prefer a faster character. That's why on the PC version, I'm rocking the Ninja. And before that, I was rocking the Shadow Hunter because all you Shadow Hunter enthusiasts out there that are sitting there thinking, dude, this character sucks. He does. Don't worry though, because if you can manage to grind your character up to the end game with the Shadow Hunter and get his class gem ability, granted you're gonna need 5,000 power rank in order to actually get that, but if you can, folks, check out my videos, I'm telling you, check out the videos that show off all of the class gem abilities, because a lot of the class gem abilities end up completely changing the characters, and for the Shadow Hunter, it is the best class gem ability in the game, because it pretty much makes your normal attack a machine gun. For the Candy Barbarian, all it does is changes our launch jump uh, into an ability where we would hold it down, and it would pull enemies towards us, similar to the Revenant's ultimate ability, and unfortunately Unfortunately, it's not a very useful skill because, as I've explained in another video, uh, tanking is not really so much of a thing in this game. Uh, you know, Trove, honestly speaking, doesn't have the AI to support tanks uh, because there's no aggro or anything like that. So while it may be a cool ability and you'd think it would be very, very good, and maybe it will prove to be a very good ability on console, I could see that because the game ends up playing slower and holding all the enemies in would definitely be something that would benefit the group. For the, the fact of the matter is if you're trying to do it alone, there is no benefit, you know? And in fact, the leap ability with the candy barb ends up just being better. Like on the PC version, 
No, barely anybody even uses the class gem ability on the candy barb, let alone like for the ice sage and stuff like that, just because of the way that the abilities ends up working, uh, you know, especially with the damage multipliers and stuff. But anyways, that again is just as try hard as Trove ends up getting. But that is all the time that we have for today, everybody. Uh, I got to go and get things prepared for the uh, tutorial video that I talked about that's going to end up coming out tomorrow, uh, talking about the fishing and stuff like that. But otherwise, again, finally, once and for all, I just got to say thank you all so much because seriously, I, I can't even believe the amount of positivity and support that I've been getting from everybody that's been watching the series. And it just, it melts my heart, man. Like, it makes me so stoked to be a YouTuber and see that uh, the work that I'm putting into these videos that I have been putting into these videos for years is actually starting to... Uh, pay off tenfold, you know? Not not that I'm doing all of this for the views or anything like that, don't get me wrong. It's just, it definitely makes it more exciting to see people uh, that are actually enjoying it and into it, you know what I mean? Uh, but anyways, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Next actual episode in the series, we're going to be on the Draco, and uh, the next video is going to be talking about fishing and pirates and all that beautiful stuff. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Very much appreciated. Do not forget to like, share, your favorite and subscribe for more daily content also before we finish i do want to say that uh, I'm not going to give the shout out right now, but I ended up having a couple people give me some codes to some mounts uh, for my PC series, right? But something that's very interesting, and I'll talk about this in more detail a little bit later, is that you can actually use codes across the PC, Xbox, and PS4. So that means that we're going to actually be able to start giving away some stuff to all of you fine, beautiful people in the Xbox series, which is fantastic isn't it like it really gets me pumped about it because it means that all of us free-to-play players can get rid of our stupid slow sebastian right thanks so much for watching sidor stay epic everybody